Hello everyone and welcome back to One Man Stream. In today's episode, we're going to show you how to create this graphic right here. I call it my starting five graphic. I use it for basketball, but with a little bit of tweaking, you could pretty much, you know, make it uh, usable for any sport. So we're going to show you how we do this step by step. We're going to start with uh, the construction of the graphic in GT Title Designer. And then in the next episode, we'll show you how to get the data into this graphic uh, using the list widget function that we've talked about on previous episodes. And then we're gonna come back with one more episode and show you how to add data into this graphic uh, from an Excel spreadsheet using a function called VLOOKUP. We're gonna have that and so much more for you on today's episode of One Man Stream. So to get started, we're going to go to uh, GT Title Designer. And uh, this is our palette. We're going to start off with a fresh palette. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create this in three layers. Uh, the first layer is going to be the player image, the team logo, and our main rectangle. And our main rectangle is going to be uh, made uh, with a gradient. And then layer two is going to be the team name, which is going to be on the left-hand side. And then our third rectangle is going to be the player bio rectangle. And uh, that is going to be at the bottom. And that will have the player's name and the player's number. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I'm going to make the first layer visible. And you can see we have three elements here. Uh, the first element is the main rectangle. And as I said, that is a gradient. So in order to do this, you would go up to gradient and click on uh, slide down here to where it says gradient and then click on that. And when you open it up, you only have two stops here. So what I had to do is I had to add four stops. So I just clicked add stop four times and it brought these guys in. And then what I did is I set the two on the ends a darker color. I'm using three shades of gray on this gradient and the two endpoints are the darker one. So uh, that's this shade right here. And then I go to the one on the far right, click on the color button again. You can see that the darker shade is highlighted. And then I go on the two uh, next to the ones we just created. And you can see it's the next shade of gray. And it's that way on both of them. And then you can see the two in the middle are the lightest shade of gray on my color palette. And that's how we made the main rectangle. So our next element was the team logo. And how did we do that? Well, we went up to image and I just clicked on I found an, uh, a logo that I wanted to go with. It was actually the first one that popped up that I thought would be usable. And I click open. And as usual, it comes in pretty large. So I scaled it down to something that I could use. And then what I did is I put it in position and I changed the opacity of it to make it lighter. So I, I go up to effects and then under opacity, I bring it down to about 21 and you can see that it's starting to get lighter. And so I put it at 21 and that's how we did that. You'll notice if I move it over here, it's about the same, the same opacity as that one. So that's how we did the uh, logo, the team logo image. The next piece was the uh, player image. I did that the same way. I went up and I hit picture, chose this one here, scaled it down. And I didn't uh, mess with the opacity on this one. I just kind of put it where I wanted it. And you can always, uh, by clicking on the header here for image one, then you can use your arrows on your keyboard and you can see uh, the image is going up and down. And I'm just doing that by using uh, the arrows on the keyboard. So that's how I did the player image. So our next part is layer two and I'll go ahead and show you what layer two looks like and that is this rectangle over here and then the team name so we did it the same way what I did is I just came up here and I created a rectangle 
and I know the size of these rectangles and I'll go ahead and give it to you 217 by 50. So I'll go under format. I'll click on 217 width and 50 height. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to effects and we're going to skew it. And then after we have it uh, the way that we want it, I'm going to hold the control button down on the keyboard. And with my mouse, I'm going to click on these arrows that converge in the center of the circle. And I'm going to rotate it. And then I'm going to go to format. And I'm going to make sure the Z rotation is, is, is exactly 90, to, 90 degrees. Then I'm going to come back. And I'm going to change the color the fill color to black. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is the team name. And we're going to make a rectangle again. And we're going to center the uh, text. Well, first we're going to make it impact. And we're going to make it extra bold. And then we're going to center it right and left, up and down. And then we're going to go over here and click this button and we're going to click shrink. And that way, if we have a very long team name, we'll still be able to confide it, conf confine it uh, inside of this text box here. And we're going to change the fill color to white. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did last time going to hold down the control key. I'm going to come to where these arrows converge and I'm going to rotate it. And then I'm going to go check the format and make sure the Z rotation is exactly 90. And then I'm going to bring this over and put it right here. So then what I would do is I would make sure that I make these guys a layer because we want to do this in three layers. So what I would do is I would highlight uh, rectangle one and then I would highlight text box one and the names that I gave those were team name you can see that right here and team name rectangle I have them highlighted and then I go click on the home button and create a group layer and that puts everything in one layer and it's going to allow me to move it over here into position and then you can use the fine arrows once again to get it exactly where you want it so that's how we did that second group of elements Third group of elements is layer three. And these guys are entitled player bio rectangle, which is this main black rectangle here. Player number, which is the number right here. And player name, which is right here. And I'm not going to go through all the steps. I'm, I don't want to beat you guys over the head with this. But for the number 10, I had to go up and use this to create a text block. And then I use the impact font. I centered it in the middle, left and uh, in the middle, up and down, and left and right. And then that's how we did this. And on the player name, I did the same thing. I went up and created a text box again using the same font impact. I notched the size down just a little bit. On the number, I used 36, but on the name, I used 28. And then make sure you use the shrink function here so that longer names are going to fit within that text box. After I did that, I went and highlighted the names again for those three elements. And I went back to home. Oops. I went back to home and I created a group layer. And that's how I did it. Now I'm going to show you the animation that I put in here and then I'll show you how we do the animation step by step. This is the animation and I want the main part to come in first and then I want the other elements to come in with just a little bit of a delay. So how did we do that? Well, let's go to layer one. We're going, going to go under animations and what I did is I used reveal and there's no delay on this. But I sped up the duration a little bit. I made it a half a second. I think the default is one second. And I made it a half a second. I want it to reveal itself from the right. So let's click on it and see what happens.
well that's everything but you can see that it reveals itself from the right okay let's go and look at the second the second element layer two let's go to animation I used reveal again and since we rotated this 90 degrees we're not coming at ha we're not having it come in uh, from the left hand side we're having it come in from the bottom so let's take a look at this one you can see that it starts from the bottom and makes its way up and how did we do that well let's go to animations and take a look layer 2 animation and we did delay it we delayed it a half a second and we cut down the duration to a half a second so the third part is the is layer 3 and it's the player name and that information and let's look under animation and what we did is we didn't delay that quite as long we delayed that a quarter of a second and the duration is a half a second like the other ones so when you put it all together you get that so how do we go from one to four well that's the easy part you'll come here and you'll click on layer one and then you'll right click copy right click again and paste and then it makes it a new layer see where the layer one changed to layer five and then you bring that over excuse me you position it where you want it and then you go to the next element which is this guy right here layer two right click copy right click paste it changed layer two to layer six you slide it over and then with the arrows you do your fine adjustment and that's how we did the second part let's see layer three is the player bio rectangle and that information so we're going to do the same thing on layer three we're going to right click and copy and right click and paste changes it to layer seven and we're going to slide layer seven over where we want it and then we're going to use the arrows again to do the fine adjustment and i'm doing this kind of quickly just to uh, speed up the video process and then we're going to do the exact same thing three more times okay and you saw how quick and easy that was and don't be concerned that uh, this last rectangle is falling out of the uh, um, the area that you want to keep everything confined within so that it's visible on your screen because you'll be able to deal with that after you bring it into your vmix production you'll be able to uh, mess with the positioning and the scaling and you'll be able to put it exactly where you want it so that's how we did that so sometimes after you do all this copy and pasting the um, animations are a little bit off so let's take a look at the animations to see what that looks like now and that looks pretty good all right i think that's all we're going to cover in today's episode of one man stream and our next epi episode will show you how to use the list widget uh, to bring in data to populate this graphic and then in the third uh, episode in uh, this installment we'll show you how to use an excel spreadsheet and the data in that excel spreadsheet uh, to bring in the information and we'll use a function within excel called vlookup i hope you guys are finding these uh, tutorials helpful if you like what we're doing here please give us a thumbs up and a like and uh, make sure that you subscribe so that you'll be alerted when new videos are posted thank you